Well, kale, yes. Hey, tubers, this is Pat Jordan coming to you from the kale ghetto in Illinois. Some people think that I'm a dick. I get it. Mostly because I am a dick. Mostly because I don't accept other dicks promoting or repeating things that they are not qualified to even talk about. Along with those dicks having view counts that show that the rest of the world are either dicks or innocent seekers who have been drawn into the web of deceit. What deceit? That someone can make a claim and become so without any clinical evidence to prove the claim like people eating fucking kale raw or juiced for a health when the entire history of all cultures on the planet have never done so. I mean, where the fuck do things like this come from beyond think tanks of CIA, NSA, FDA that have a bunch of college fucks sitting around a table saying, how can we start a fad that will promise health and take out people's thyroids at the same time? Never forget, I mean it, never forget that the lack of iodine leads to cretinism in humans and animals. Did I just repeat myself? So, in a way, this idiocy is generational. Someone is taught how to do something completely fucking wrong by someone with malicious intent to gut their minds. Their minds get gutted, and since they know no other alternative, they pass on those dangerous ideas and methods to all around them like an infection. Thiocyanates are goitrogens. Yes, I said goitrogens, which, if you are just a young person who plays Coco the Gorilla to everything you see on YouTube to make green smoothies out of something that people around the world just don't fucking drink, goitrogen means causes goiter. And if you don't know what a goiter is, then look it up. I'm not here to hold the hand of every man, woman, and fluid on the planet. There's a duality to the thiocyanates. On one hand, they will gut your thyroid and your mind, while on the other hand, things like sprouted cruciferate seeds are said to heal cancer. Is this the catch-22 of living here in hell that you can't get something without losing something else in perfect alchemy philosophy? Or is it just an ignorant observation that gets repeated without the part that I share that if you do get rid of your cancer with a plant toxin, then you have to fix the aftermath? Uh, see, that's the bit that obliterates the dick label that was slapped on me. Ew, dick slapped. I don't like that. You call me a dick because you just don't like me and my presentation. A hearty fuck you is in order because despite you not liking me or my information, I am the only one that tells you both sides of the issue so that you are not harmed by some purported cure. We have clinical studies that show that iodine, not potassium iodide, will fix breast cancer. Iodine is a powerful oxidant. Oh, Jesus, get the antioxidants! Oh, beginning to sink in now? Beginning to see that some asshole on alternative media that has formulated a nascent iodine solution for you, putting in vitamin C, has just canceled out any effects that the iodine might have had? Get it? Who's the dick now? So if thiocyanates are anti-thyroid, then the dickhead repeaters with green stains on their lips need to tell us and show us the clinical evidence on how this plant toxin fixes one thing but does not create a new disease. Cyanide is used in many forms for cancer treatment for the cells that respond to oxygen deprivation. Yes, I said oxygen deprivation. Are you feeling stupid yet? Religious nuttery claims that antioxidants somehow get rid of free radicals, the bad oxygen, and support the good oxygen without ever defining what the atomic characteristics of that good oxygen is. Never forget that Albert St. Georgi, the discoverer of vitamin C, said that life cannot build unless you have oxygen radicals. Who's the enemy now? 
So taking cyanide that turns you blue from lack of oxygen is said to cure cancer by putting oxygen into fermentative cells. Like I said, show me the clinical studies with mechanism of action because it sounds like folks are just vomiting green kale smoothies, calling it science. Mind where you step. There are cancers that grow in hyperbaric chambers. There's always two or more sides to any situation. So whether it's peach pits or broccoli seeds, the cyanide is going to have an effect on the cancer, but the antioxidants will also interfere with thyroid peroxidase at the very least. See, science, cause and effect. Not dickhead repeating of some eager young thing mixing up shit in a blender to show you what they drink in a day. Will these internet acolytes report their own follow-up in a few years to give you the view inside their kitchens to show that they have a new recipe to undo the thyroid damage that they did to themselves because they followed the advice of some enthusiastic young thing who got their information from... where exactly? Because if it didn't come from a hostile government think tank, then there aren't enough dickheads on the planet to stack like cordwood to get an idea that putting kale in a blender was ever a good idea. In fact, the rules of food combining are obliterated by tossing any number of fruits and incompatible stuff to cover up the taste of the kale. Why am I such a dick? Well, because since 1973, I have been growing green, and curly blue and red Russian and Siberian kale along with collards, then steaming them and eating them as they have been eaten by generations before me, not putting them in a blender to harm myself. By 2011, I was fermenting the stuff and dumping the brine. There is a certifiable psychopath on the web that says to drink the unbelievably horrific stinking juice to cure everything and even grow back limbs. By all means, send me the before and after photos on that. I mean, Operation MK Ultra has become Operation Mind Crime. Thank you, Queensryche. Even uneducated Africans in the bush will bury their collards in the clay, then dig them up after the oozing and bubbling has stopped, to harvest the fermented leaves and then dry them to crumble them into their cooking. Fermenting does not destroy thiocyanates, but cooking does reduce their levels. If uneducated Africans have historical methods for dealing with plant material, then what is going on with what brags to be the most advanced civilization on the planet? Planet of the apes? Planet of the dicks. So think of this short tutorial on how not to be a dick as a bitch slap to wake you up from your Operation Mockingbird conditioning to enthusiastically repeat everything you hear and see that is wrong and given to you by your controllers. Get a set of balls, girls too, and demand that there be clinical evidence of claims with clinical evidence of how to minimize or eliminate the secondary harm that will ensue from following bad advice of your fellow dicks. In postscript, let me be a little fatherly. I was young once. When I was in my 20s, I used to body surf at Zuma Beach in Los Angeles when there were medical waste alerts for the ocean. When we're young, we think we're indestructible. But worse than that is that there are suppressive chemicals and electromagnetic warfare that literally shuts off all reason in young and old. So when you warn someone that they are doing something totally fucked and beyond reason, but they shrug and say, I don't care, then you know that they are the product of their masters. If you actually watch more than the first Matrix movie, the character of the kid thanks Neo for freeing him. Neo said he didn't free him, the kid freed himself. Profound stuff. Think about it. I can't break you out of your Project Mockingbird conditioning to do as you're told. I can only show you the exit sign. You have to free yourself. 
as the movie progresses, we find that the kid, that even the elite team of heroes views as a total annoyance, was the single figure that saved that entire crew. And you can thank me in the comments below, and my name is not Richard. <laughs>